Hi and welcome to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to label a picture in Word and create a nice graded background. So whilst I've taught you how to label a diagram in a previous video, the difference with this is that the photograph has a background. So let's just go to insert, pictures, picture from file, select your image and click insert. Now with every image inserted, I know you've heard this a thousand times, you won't be able to move it. So select it, go to wrap text and then select in front or behind text. Now normally I select in front of text, but for this particular video I'm going to select behind text and I'll show you why. If I go to design and I just change the background colour of this page, if I just change it to light grey, you can see what we've actually got in this image, this white background to the image. Now if I was to put any text here, it may well go behind the photograph, but obviously we need to make it come in front of the photograph, including any arrows that we use. So for that reason, I'm just going to reduce this photograph down a little bit. We need to know a few techniques. So I'm just going to take off that background colour, select no colour, and then we're going to introduce our first label. So go to insert, go to word art, and then just select this one here. Now this particular word art, if I zoom in, you may or may not be able to see it, but there is a slight shadow to this text. Now you can leave that on if you want to, but I'm just going to remove it. So make sure it's selected, make sure you're on shape format, go to format pane, and then in the text options here, go to this middle icon and go to shadow and then go to presets and select no shadow. And there you can see that shadow has been removed. Now in here you need to insert your text and you can simply start typing. So I can start typing here. However, what I am going to do is just copy and paste these from my previous diagram because I'm sure you don't want to see me typing. So I'm just going to copy it across, but what I will do is I will show you the font and font sizes I've used. So if you, I just click inside here and go to the Home tab, you can see this is the font I've used and this is the font size. Of course, you can change all this if you want to, and obviously I've just selected this section here and just press the Bold tab there. Now the great thing about these text boxes is you can grab the corners and you can move them around so that the text will be displayed exactly how you want it to. Not forgetting, of course, we've got left align, center align, right align, and justify. So you can have any of these that you choose. What I've tended to do, as I'll demonstrate, is use the left align to the left side, right align to the right hand side, and then center with the ones at the top and the bottom. But again, this is all very much personal choice. Now, once I've taken the shadow off and put some text in, instead of then going back up to insert and then using the text box again, all I'm actually going to do is copy and paste this text box. So select it. The easiest way to do this is to hold down your Alt or Option key, click and drag, and then you'll copy out another one of those text boxes. And then just click inside. You can see the cursor's flashing. You can select all of the text and then once again you can just begin typing. And Once again I'm just going to paste it across so you don't have to watch me type. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to speed up the video and insert all of my labels and then come back and show you the rest of the techniques and tools that you need to create this project. Okay, so now I've inserted all of my labels, I now need to insert some arrows. So go to insert, go to shapes, click on the drop down, and you can select from a number of them. There's obviously these two here, you can have some wavy ones if you want to, and you've got the arrows down here, so it's totally up to you. I'm going to select this one here, and then I just click and draw out that arrow. So for some customization, make sure the arrow is selected. You can see by these green balls. Go to Shape Format, 
then you can go to this icon here, which is shape outline, but this is also related to that arrow. I'm going to change mine to black, click on it again, go to weight, and you can select any of these weights here. I'm going to select this one, three points, and you can see there is the thickness of your arrow. Now you can click on the end of this arrow, move it around. You can see it's a little bit clunky and it does glitch a bit, but if you hold down your Alt or Option key, we can smooth out that action and be quite accurate with exactly where we place that arrow. Same goes for this side as well. You can do exactly the same this side. So now all I'm going to do is copy and paste this arrow. So once it's selected, I'm going to press Command or Control C and then Command or Control V. And then I'm going to grab this end and just place it roughly against each one. Now I'm not going to be too accurate because I'm going to go around and move it all so that it looks perfect. But I'm just going to put them out roughly. So instead of doing Command or Control C again, I just have to press Command or Control V and it will produce another arrow. Okay, so now we've got most of the elements into our diagram, we can now start to move things around, give ourselves a little bit of space and also customize these labels. So the first thing I noticed is everything is quite close to the top of the page. I just want to move everything down. So the quickest way to do that is to select anything on the page, doesn't matter what it is, make sure you're on shape format and go over to the selection pane here. Now here is a list of everything you've inserted into your document. You can use these little pupils or eyes to select each one to identify which one it's referring to because they're just literally labeled almost identically. So you just have to click through to find out which element it is. But in this case, we just want to select everything. So select the top one, hold the shift key and select the bottom one. And you can see now everything's been selected. Go to group and select group. And then all we have to do is use the arrow key, move everything down. Then we go back up to group and select ungroup. So simply to customize these, you just grab one of the boxes, you put it exactly where you want. You can move the arrows around so that it's placed perfectly. Now, don't forget, you do want to leave a bit of a margin space to the side. Otherwise, like this one, it does jar with the eye. So don't leave it too close to the edge of the page. Make sure that you pull it in and you can always pull this down and you can move them around the edge of your diagram. Now you'll notice at the moment that all my text is above my image and I can go all the way over the top of it. However, sometimes if it's at the back like this and I move it over and it disappears behind the back, all you have to do is to go up to this section here, send backwards or bring forwards, click on the relevant one to bring it forwards and then select bring to front and therefore that text will be on the front of your image. This makes it a lot easier to put the text exactly where you want. So I'm now going to speed up the video, go through all of this, put it exactly where I want and then I'll come back, show you how to put the title on and also the background. Now, once you've finished and you're happy with the layout and all of the arrows, you can go back up to the selection pane here. Then you can select everything again, go to the top, hit the shift key, go to the bottom, go to group, select group. And now what you can do by eye, because you can see there's a slightly bigger margin over here than there is here. So by eye, you can move this with your arrows once you're happy with that being in the center of the page and the actual placement, we can go ahead and put some text in across the top for the title. So once again, I'm going to go to insert word art, click on this one. This time I won't take out the shadow. I'm just going to type in human cell. Then I'm going to go to a line and select a line to center, deselect it. I'm just going to move that up a little bit with an arrow, insert, shapes. I'm going to select the rounded cornered rectangle, click and drag out. Then with the shape fill up here, once it's selected, go to shape fill, select a color of your choice. You can also go to more fill colors and use this color wheel to match some colors in here. Now I'd always recommend 
matching some colours from your picture to your diagram and background because that will just make the whole thing more cohesive and look professional. If you don't, it might look a bit off, it might look a bit weird. So try to select colours from your diagram. So you can do that. I've actually pre-selected some colours here. So I'm going to select this one for the inside and then go to outline and select the darker one. And I could actually choose the weighted option here to six, but actually I don't think six is quite big enough for that outline. If you want to change it, just select it, go back over to format pane, go to the bucket icon and go to line. You can see we've got solid line here ticked, the color here, and the width is here. So I'm gonna take this width up to 10 points and press enter, just creating a bigger outline. So we've gone over the top of the text. So once again, we need to select it, go to send backwards and click center back. Then we can select the text as well. Now to select multiple items, hold down the command or control key. Make sure it's aligned, align to center, align to middle, then group it together. Now it's one group, you can go back up to align and make sure it's aligned to the center and then deselect. I'm just going to go to this text here, select it, just go to the home tab and make it bold. Perfect. So the final thing now is to put that gradient at the background, go to insert shapes, click on the rectangle, click and draw out a rectangle that will stretch all the way across your page. Then we can go over to format shape, go to fill. We're on the bucket icon here go to gradient fill. And as you can see, because I've rehearsed this, the default from the last one has appeared. But the way to do this is to go to type and make sure you're on radial, then go to direction. And I'm sorry you can't see it, but it's the middle one. You can just see is a circle in the middle. And then these here will select your colors. So select it and then go to color, select the color I've chosen white, select this one, and again, select color, choose a color of your choice. And I've gone to one of the pre-selected colors here. And then you can move these sliders to adjust your gradient. So first of all, I'm going to send it backwards. So at the top here, click on the drop down and select center back. Then select this white slider, take it all the way out. So what we actually do is cover that white background of our original photograph and blend it into the rest of the text. Once you're finished, you can save this as a Word document or a PDF. If you can't be bothered to do any of this and you want to use this diagram, there is a link in the description below where it can be downloaded. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.